Welcome back, everyone. It's five o'clock Bali time. That means it's time for the Underwater Tribe live show. Wednesday live show is on, guys. How is everyone? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Mike is back. I'm Mike. Guess who's back? This is Luca. Mike is back. We he was not here on Monday. Tribe. Well, you I was went not away. Here on Monday. I went away. You went away. I had appointments. I had meetings. I had important people to see. Things are happening, guys. We see? slowly, slowly get to him back into track. But I left also, you on your own. How did you do? Uh, I, I rumbled a little bit at the beginning of the show for sure without having you here there. You know, like it, it's a chemistry going on. on there. All I of the sudden, it was there. Schedule. Where is the guy? You know, like I need somebody like to talk to. You know, well, that when especially you know it's tough to actually run this uh, whole thing there. When, and look uh, at the camera. Look at the camera and, and say talk. hello. And, and even okay, I have got to a think about let's what see, Let's say. see, because I'm not sure if you can do this. Can you pat your head and rub your belly at the same time? <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't sure you could actually do that, knowing uh, knowing when I ask you a question uh, and you're right, doing something uh, else, like you have a, a hard time. Very synchronized person. Very hard that's, time doing that's, two that's things That's not at a once. problem. It's more difficult, actually, to, you know, to talk. To talk and speak yes. guys if you're tuning in uh, we are live now please uh, say hi and say where you're watching from it's always interesting to know like where our audience is watching from where are we watching? while you were away on monday yes i did start a theme which is Ooh. going to be conservation week yes 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 so conservation week on monday sure. it started on a high with CTC. Yes, with the, the Coral Triangle Center. And then today we're going to keep on the conservation theme with one of our friends, familiar face to you guys, uh, Pepe Arcos, yes. that has been already on the show and has also been on our podcast before. One of our local, basically, friend here. He lives exactly. on the other side, which uh, has been recently or let's say just before COVID uh, uh, <laughs> started, like going full into it, uh, actually going to follow and uh, portraying a very interesting project, which we really like, which uh, help rehabilitate dolphins yes. that they come from, uh, um, what you call it? Uh, an, like, uh, an amusement park kind yeah, of thing? It wasn't amusement actually amusement park, park it was, like it dolphin hotel. shows, hotels, like that. So, so lots of those... Uh, for us, diverse, unethical sort Correct. of uh, um, displays and show. So there is this pool. sanctuary up in Bali now, which is uh, actually near Menjangan. It's not that far from there. No, right? no yeah. it's not. Yeah. And uh, they got their uh, three dolphins, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And uh, Pepe was uh, uh, assigned to go there and take uh, pictures of uh, this uh, center. and get some images and yep. as you will see during the interview he portrayed them beautifully and he portrayed them uh, with uh, um, the art that they always bring underwater correct yeah. and it's important to note that this is not a commercial enterprise this is not something where we can go and and, and pay money and and go to see the dolphins it's not it's not it's not a tourist attraction it's basically a retirement place for these dolphins that have been mistreated for so long right they can now go there and live actually in the ocean where they obviously they really can't take care of themselves so much in the wild because they've been encaged for so long um, yeah. but it's some place of quiet and a much more space than they're used to where they can live a little bit more of a normal life than what they've been used to so yeah and people started to check in, checking in uh, live uh, on our show. I see that uh, we have uh, Juhani, we have James, we have Reina, we have Miho over there. Hello, everyone. Good oh, to yes, see you. Are. Yeah, it was taking a while to kick in. I was thinking like, where, where is Maybe everyone? Maybe we're early. Where is everyone? Maybe we're becoming too good at five o'clock sharp. Boom. We live. But last time I said this, we lost the connection. So we better be quiet yes. about that. Right, yes, these <coughs> dolphins, they, uh, not dolphin, general, they, also during our um, Aaron Jokowski, um show. Yep. The first time around. Yes, and also the second time we talk about, you know, like, especially the first one, yes, that all the tourist attractions, uh, which uh, uh, give a display of wild animals uh, like that, and, uh, you know, many people... Uh, don't really know about it you yep. know they go there and they think like it's good for my kids but actually those animals are uh, dragged uh, away 
uh, pretty much most of the times so from the wild to be kept in a small cage and to be made doing things that they would not do normally in nature Correct. one of which would be interacting with people you know Correct. the biggest one right and dolphins do sometimes interact with divers when we're lucky but it's on their terms yeah. not on our terms and how many times did you have let's say a good dolphin interaction in the, water, well, in the wild I, I i i lie about that in tahiti we used to get one that would interact with us but we also think that it may have escaped from uh, one of these dolphin enclosures we're not sure because it, it was so friendly exactly and okay, it was all by itself for a long time yeah. before it found a new pod and then uh, you know like uh, also in, um, in i think in red sea like in uh, marsa alam they have like uh, one of those uh, places where there is a bay with lots of dolphins and people can go there and diving or snorkeling now i'm not sure i think you can do both okay like both of them and they see divers more often but they're in the wild it's more like but also like you know like even diving could be sometimes a little bit of a pressure on their behavior you know when you start to have you know like uh, that big groups of divers that they just oh there is the dolphins yeah. just start to swim towards them can give a little bit of pressure in uh, i think in the caribbean too there is a place yeah honduras where you, has one where they've you got can go captive and dolphins see that, dolphin in yeah. the live well also there, well, they, there they've actually got the train the where they leave from the pen they go out into the ocean with the boats all right but then they come back and they come back yeah, yeah because that's one thing that also we will talk during this interview is that once you take them away they disadapt Mm -hmm. and they kind of have struggle eventually to go back in there and that's why you were saying this is more like of a retirement uh, yeah. sort of uh, place for them to be without stress after all these years of human interactions and to some of them guys they do the worst thing they keep them in swimming pool with chlorine they remove the teeth so that they don't bite the guests that they can um, actually that they go there to touch them the whole time and the dolphin by nature has that beautiful smiley face yes. right it looks happy all the time but uh, obviously if you're without teeth uh, in a in a chlorine pool is not uh, that good. not really a yeah. natural thing. by the way guys we also put uh, in uh, uh in the comments uh, we put uh, in the description of uh, this show we put few links uh, with the people actually uh, behind this project they do some such a great work uh, and uh, they are not only about dolphins but basically of all uh, wildlife animal that sometimes uh, they find uh, you know in places still active as a tourist attraction like in this case but in other cases uh, like uh, they might be um, they bust uh, some uh, harbors uh, or some um, like uh, airports where there are actually wildlife uh, trading going on. And they do a lot of work also with orangutans and, and monkeys and, and uh, right. all kinds of endangered species throughout Indonesia. Yeah. Don't forget to give a like, guys, uh, to, uh, to share with your friends uh, about this is going to be another great show. And uh, hello, Karin. Good to see Karen you there. And Jennifer is there as well. Also, Jennifer is there. Good to see you there. It's always uh, nice to see familiar, nice familiar faces. Faces. Oh. Icons. We can see it yes. over there. <laughs> we can't see their faces. We can see their names on our screen. Right. Soon. Soon we should be able to see their faces. Yes. And uh, guys, if you have uh, any question, I'm sure Pepe will be around there. And if yeah, you Pepe already let tuned us in know, earlier. engage in the chat room as usual. Uh, we are there and we are happy to uh, know, answer those questions. Yes. Okay, guys, let's jump straight into the interview with our friend Pepe Arcos. And uh, here we go. We got uh, Pepe Arcos. Uh, so you've been already on our show earlier on, guys. If you missed uh, Pepe in uh, the previous uh, show, he also brought uh, more explanation about uh, who he is uh, and uh, what he does and his fantastic uh, work uh, taking over the years. Thanks, Pepe, for joining us. Thank you very much, guys, to, to be back here with you. You're Amazing. now the, the person that's been on here the, the most often. Yes, with number three, you are the wow. person that has been here I'm the honored. most. I want a t-shirt like you guys. Huh? Next <laughs> time I have to wear Is that actually, it looks yeah. like one of Leah Barrett's shirts. Is that a Leah Barrett shirt that you got on? It, it, it is. I took very well spot. Ah, 
Uh-huh. Bruno Avarel. Yeah. Big, big shout uh-huh. out to Leah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Oh, she just put me in these ta- online challenges. Now I have to to upload 10 photos, like 10 days of one photo each day. Like, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> oh, we got 10 photos here you can upload. Easy. Yes. Like, boom. Pepe, I know it's difficult. 30 seconds. Introduce some, yourself again to the people that they are for the first time here hearing about you in the show. All right, so my name is Pepe Arcos. I'm from Spain, uh, live in Madrid for the last years. Uh, I'm an underwater photographer and a fashion commercial photographer as well on land. Excellent. I'm a free diver and I'm also now becoming a diver. <laughs> yes, more more into scuba too. Yes. Yeah. And uh, definitely, guys, if you haven't seen Pepe show earlier on, definitely at the end of this, uh, please go and catch up to that episode. Pepe, we want to, we wanted you to come back uh, on our show because uh, I, I knew, you know, like we're friends, so I know what you are up to in uh, in uh, in these days uh, and uh, the latest project that you've been working on. And one of uh, the projects you've been working on that really captured uh, my attention uh, and uh, I wanted to discuss with you more about it was uh, this project uh, with uh, captive uh, dolphins here in Bali. So this has been quite a hot topic uh, and uh, unfortunately Bali Island being one of uh, uh, the big uh, tourist destination uh, is, it has still like some areas where you have shows with the captive dolphins. And I remember like uh, um, maybe two years ago or so, there was a big uh, things going on on social media about uh, one area where they had these uh, dolphins uh, kept uh, inside the swimming pool in treacherous conditions. Uh, and uh, the public really went to know it. And eventually I heard that uh, it was uh, shut down. Okay. So, what uh, have you been uh, doing and uh, basically with who have you been working into this uh, rehab center for for dolphins tell us a little bit about it okay well that was an excellent introduction that's exactly how i got to know this project so so they were um they told me that they created this sanctuary it's the first sanctuary dolphin sanctuary in the world for rescue dolphins so what it is what it is a rescue dolphin it's not a dolphin that it was in the wild injured and then it goes there. They are all dolphins that they were kept in captivity. They were first uh, took, you know, uh, took away from, from, the, from the wild. And they've been, these ones, for example, the ones that, I, that I'm working with, they were more than 10 years in a hotel in a, chlor- in a chlorine uh, water and doing just show for people. So, so they, uh, they keep them in chlorine water in a swimming pool? Some of them, yes. At these ones, yes. And we can talk a little bit like, uh, what happened to them? Because it's just really, really bad for, for health, for the dog, well, for everybody, I guess. But for the dolphins, it's really the wrong uh, environment too. So it was quite, um, quite a bad life for these animals. So the thing, the good thing is we have a, an amazing uh, team of people, uh, very well coordinated with the Indonesian government and, and some associations. So they were making a lot of pressure to release, to rescue these dolphins, uh, the ones that they were worst in worse conditions, okay? They were monitoring the dolphins from a long time. We're talking about that 10 years period until they were like getting very sick and getting in very bad shape. So they could uh, activate the, 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 the law system to, to remove them and, and put them in a safer place and take care of them. So there were four dolphins. They are four dolphins right now in the sanctuary. So they built the sanctuary, it's a sea pen. I'm gonna show you a little bit guys how, how does it look like. And these dolphins, they were moved from the, that facility into, for the first time, into the ocean water. Of course, it's a confined environment, so they have a net. Uh, it's in the middle of the water, in the ocean. But they can finally be, you know, with other animals. There's, like, fish around, like, live fish coming in and out. With the sonar, they can, they know about the space around. So, and they are recovering uh, slowly, slowly, but they are recovering day by day. Did they all come from the same place? All four of them, or were they from yeah, those different ones, yeah. places? Those ones, no, those ones, they come from the same place. It was a hotel, a hotel in Lovina. Um, so those ones, they came from there. And, and then it was Femke. Uh, we can talk a little bit about her. She was the leader. She's the coordinator of Dolphin Projects uh, and some other wildlife uh, protection activities in, in the whole Indonesia, but uh, more actively here in Bali. 
So she was the she was leading the team to to take them, and and right now they are living in this sea pen for for quite a while. Unfortunately, one of them died uh, recently because he was in a in very bad shape. Uh, old dolphin as well, like quite old, and and he passed away. So it was quite a sad uh, news. So right now we have three dolphins having a slowly slowly having a very nice life. Uh, that was my I went there two times. To shoot, I'm very, very lucky that they invited me to, 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 to be part of the team because there's no media allowed to be there. We're trying to avoid interaction with them. We, of course, we're trying to avoid like people going in the water and swimming or just going. In. There's many. All my friends they told me like, Pepe, we want to go and see the dolphins. Like I know it's a natural thing that we all love these animals and that's really, really good. These ones are recovering. They are not. They they've been exposed for. For humans for a long time and they they are not it's not an open place for for visitors now Correct. i am i'm 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 allowed to be there as a part of the of the crew as a crew member so my my deal is i just taking photographs of them and i'm gonna with those photographs i'm gonna try to create a collection special collection and help media promotion of the activities and uh, we probably i'm thinking about organizing maybe an exhibition and and you know, get some funds to help uh, to, you know, to make a better facility to help everybody that is there because it's a full-time team just taking care of the dolphins mm -hmm. and ex-trainers and, and all the people, all the, all the volunteers that are just there working uh, in the north of Bali. And so they need help, of course. Mm -hmm. They need all our help. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, I love these animals, but I saw them always in the wild. I never saw these type of dolphins. Yes. How, how, how's it shoot? You know, like if you like for the friends that want to go and see the dolphins, I mean, the way to see a dolphin should be in the wild. Be lucky and treasure the chance of seeing one of these animals in, in the wild. So not give it for granted in a zoo. Are they, uh, are they bottlenose dolphins? They are. Yep. They're bottlenose dolphins. For them, yeah. And um, do you know their history? Were they captured locally? Were they captured in the, in the dolphin trade somewhere? Or those ones? Um, I might be wrong. We need to speak with them because she is the one that could give us all the information, all the insights. Uh, I'm just a photographer, <laughs> but what I know <laughs> is they were uh, they they were uh, removed from from Indonesia from uh, from an area I think is in Sumatra. I'm not hundred okay. percent sure. Okay. We, all right. We, and I, actually, I think that would be very cool also to uh, to ask Femke if she wants to take part on our show mm -hmm. and uh, follow up uh, on uh, the conversation that we are going to have now with you, so we can ask uh, all those details uh, to her. And uh, we also like uh, to bring on the show uh, strong advocates for the ocean, like conservationist, uh, like uh, Femke. And we had Aaron in the past. Uh, we had uh, Sarah Lewis, Mark Erdman. So definitely, we maybe you can help us to get in touch with her because uh, this course. is a story that uh, could interest uh, many one of our audience. But now let's keep yeah. it. Uh, let's say from uh, from your point of view and uh, let's say a photographic uh, uh, aspect to it. So you have this uh, assignment coming up. Okay, you are. Uh, in your house in Bali and uh, this uh, this uh, opportunity arise what was uh, your thinking like uh, you must have thought okay I'm going to be there with dolphins in an enclosure what uh, sort of uh, mind process of the the photographer mind uh, came to you um, okay so I, I we, we discuss a little bit first I ask guys how can I help what, what can I do for you? I'm, I'm a photographer, but I'm also this type of photographer. Maybe there's other people if you just want to follow up or more into the documentary, because I would probably like to create what I do. So get a selection of images that they are more artistic, if I can, and to share with the world. That's kind of my, the thing that I think I can do. Uh, of course, I can try to shoot, but I'm not going to be probably the best photographer to shoot behaviors or like daily life, you know, more as a, as a documentary photographer. So they said, Pepe, we just want you to come here and do what you do. Uh, we saw your exhibitions. We know, your, we know you. So just come, uh, spend time with them, and, and let's see what you get. Nothing more. So I had full freedom, basically, uh, 
to, to shoot. So it was not an assignment, it's just a collaboration. So for me, I'm more like, uh, there's absolutely a, there's no, no economic, nothing is not a commercial project. It's just me trying to be there, understand what's going on, understand everybody, all the people around, and uh, just listen uh, to the dolphins and to the take, uh, caretakers and, and, and see the whole environment and try to come up with, with something artistic. So, so I went there two times. Uh, if you guys want, we can show a little bit how does it look like. Sure. And uh, start with number two. Yeah, so number two, this is the sea pen. So you can see here, it, we are in the ocean. This is uh, in a cove, in an area, in a very protected uh, area, but open, open water in, in Permuteran, uh, North Bali. So if you get to the next, uh, the image number three, you can see the separation between two areas, right? Because at the beginning, they were uh, separated, uh, the four dolphins. So Johnny, uh, it is. Johnny and Dewa, yeah, Johnny and Dewa, they were older dolphins and they were used to be more, they said like healing dolphins. So they were more like with humans, especially with kids. Uh, and they were older and they were not in a good shape. They, they lost the, the, the view, they could not, they were a little bit blind and more delicate. And they were actually the one that passed uh, had, uh, they were all males, the four of them, they're males. They were had a mental issue, a mental problem. So it was like self-harming. It was quite, you know, uh, sad to see, but all years in confinement, small place, it was just like messing up with his mind basically. So until the body could not go back and, and, and had a failure and, and, and passed away. So they were like just separate because the other ones, uh, Rocky and Rambo, they are younger. They are more, they were healthier. And they are more dynamic, so they play harder, and, and so just in case they, they keep them separated. Now, when they were passed away, they connect in this bridge. They connect both sea pens, so they could just go from one place to the other. And they put Johnny together with Rambo and Rocky, mm -hmm. and that was my second trip to see them, the three of them together. And their reaction was fantastic. So they they are completely the three of them swimming to. It's just amazing, guys, to see something. Really, really beautiful to, to see them. All the behavioral, even in that area, they are, they are super cool. They are scared to go to the other side. Now they have the two seat pens, okay, to go from one side to the other. And whatever reason, they don't want to go to the other side. I oh. think I've heard from Femke. Now, finally, they make them like, hey, guys, you have another playground over there. You can just go as well. And so they're using the whole uh, facility to play around. These animals, they are there to be recover and release, okay? They're not gonna stay there forever. There's no intention whatsoever to keep them there. Uh, they want to make them uh, healthy again and be able to go back again into their habitat. So they will fly them away, whatever. They will take them back to the habitat that they were kept or, the, or to the habitat that there is another dolphin like them, right? Thing is these animals, they don't even know how to catch live fish yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Johnny, they have they removed the teeth of, of Johnny and Dewa. Oh, wow. So they're all scary looking for kids. Uh, so it will take a little while, but there's like amazing people working with them in a daily basis. And now they have another area in the, in the structure. Well, for live fish, so they will start like giving them live fish. So they will start catching the live fish and moving it. They're learning a little bit more how to get their own food. And once they're ready, immediately they will be released back to the nature. Interesting. Yeah. You know, if they have With any... the GPS guys, so they will track them, okay? <laughs> so we know, you know, yeah. end up back. Any idea if they're planning on, like, is the project just for these four dolphins, or do they have a plan for more once these four or once these three have recovered and been released? Do you know if she's got a plan to, to, to get some more? Or get some more? I think so. Rehab but, more? Yeah. Yeah, this we need to, to speak with her because okay. she's, again, the coordinator. So far, this is... The, the only dolphins in the facility, in the sanctuary. Uh, but the facility will be ready to host and to have more dolphins um, if, if there is another situation like that. So, so I think this is something that we need to discuss. What are the future plans for the dolphin project in Permuteran? Again, a, there's another facility in Greece for the same type of, of animals. But this is the very first one that is called a sanctuary. It means that, you know, if Johnny never recover, he will have there. a good life there. Yeah. It's yeah. good. We will always stay there and we will guarantee, I mean, the team will guarantee that has a, a good life conditions to stay there. But the main purpose is to rescue and release back to the wild. How, how was um, your feeling? Uh, so you, you are a nature lover 
and you know the background of these dolphins and uh, what they've been through so it must be very saddening i mean what you you're talking about you know like uh, about uh, what the environment they were taken from like that it's really heart saddening you know like this so n now you you are over there and probably you know like there is some griefs in there because these are not natural uh, dolphins uh, let's say morea like we were talking in the other uh, uh, session we had together but they are in in a, in a confined environment they are safe from stress but still it, they are abused dolphins so it's like an abused animal so what was your feeling when so you know, it's a shooting day and um, what sort of uh, expression did you want to take out from your images uh, and show to your audience Right, so when I first got there, uh, we tried first with the young ones, with Rocky and Rumble, and we made a little mistake. Uh, again, that was my very, very first time being in a place like that. And usually I've been with dolphins shooting in Dolphin Reef in, in Red Sea, and we, we, you can see the same dolphins, but you know, in the wild, and they come and they do whatever they want. I saw pots of dolphins in Indonesia all over the many, many different places, but never like, Something like that. So I did what I do. I put my fins on, my free diving fins. They're very long fins. Okay. I put my kind of my free diving gear and my camera without strokes, of course. So, and I jumped in the water. Um, well, they were very nice. They're absolutely fine. Of course, they used to be with people, but they're not pets at all. And I am not definitely, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not into pets anyway, so I will just keep my distance and keep my space and I'm not going to treat them like humans or something like that. So Rocky, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Rumble did it, uh, so it was Rocky. Rocky didn't really like so much uh, my presence right there. We, we were thinking why. Um, of course, nobody's jumping in the water with them. Nobody's swimming with them. Now, th that is a, their territory, okay? And they are territorial. Um, so when I went there, Femke was in the water with me. She's taking care a little bit of because she's more uh, used to be with them. And, and they were really, really intimid intimidating. They, they didn't let me move. I got a dolphin on me, like quite excited, nervous, like um, pushy. So I could not go, I could not swim. I was just in the corner. Uh, we tried, we stopped, we went a little bit down, we did everything. But he, he was not comfortable. So we decided to leave that sea pen. Uh, and we thought it was just because of the fins, probably. It was too many things at the same time. So somebody that they don't know, with a very long fins, probably when they went to catch them, they were all wearing fins. Uh -huh. So that might trigger a trauma. We were trying to think yeah. why. Uh, maybe the camera with the reflection, but somebody was not right. They were not, one of them, he was not happy at all to, to have me around. It was was something strange because he was really, really on me. It's quite a big animal. And I, I felt intimidated as well, mm -hmm. which I'm quite used to be with all sorts of animals. But... But so I, I said like, okay, let's just move to the next one, to, the, to Johnny and Dewa, that they are very, very mellow. And if you don't like to touch animals, there's nothing you can do with these ones They will come and touch you, right? So it's just that another. So then I could spend a good quality time shooting with Johnny and Dewa and they were also more damaged. So it was more a, a very, very delicate for me, to be honest, like a very touching experience. It was a, a, a delicate moment uh, because I could feel the tiredness of, of them like the lack of attention for some things or you know so it was it was very very interesting and and and, and yeah i took nice photos on that session but my first aim was not to take good photos at the moment it was just more like to learn how what can i do there uh, also there was a lot of particles as a photographer it was a very bad it's a very bad environment to shoot okay. uh there's a lot a lot of particles at the moment so not so good visibility and these animals are when you're in the water I am not doing anything. I'm definitely not swimming and I'm just not doing anything. Then with Johnny, he was more playful. So I started swimming with him. And even I went down all the way to the bottom, which is 10 meters. And he was quite curious to see, to see me and he came a little bit. But basically I stepped back and I was all the way back yeah. with my camera, taking my shots and let them, you know, do whatever they want. That was the first uh, trip. Now, second trip, when uh, Johnny was with the, the other ones, that was a whole different world. The three of them, they were moving all the time, you know, really fast speed. Like they were just always sleeping, waiting for food or just like, you know, going really, really crazy. 
and, and a lot of action in the water with three dolphins, like very playful dolphins. I felt like they were happy. They were really, really happy and they were doing beautiful things in the water. So they built a little platform uh, for feed them to, to give them food so, that, so you can stand there uh, and, and so that they can come closer. They did this because if they need to treat them, they need to do something on them. They, they have access in the water to them. They don't need to take them outside so they can you know, heal some wounds or give them some treatment. So, so they built this platform. So I was in that platform just witnessing and letting, again, letting them come and go and do whatever they want. It's, I spent hours and hours and hours then. They're like a couple of days just there with them. One, uh, one question, uh, Pepe. Is, uh, so this was your second trip. And it shows, it seems like that you saw already some improvement in uh, their behavior, okay? Could be maybe also the reason that they already had an experience with you before, but also the fact that they were the three together versus uh, before that was, uh, they were separated. But uh, how long apart was this uh, visit? The first time it was to a, the it, second. Mm -hmm. it, it was quite a while and maybe, I don't know. Good question. Maybe a, more than a month. Or About a month. Ago. Okay. So in a month, it seems like a long time, but, uh, you know, trauma wise, uh, it's, it's actually quite a short time and you could see already some incredible in, uh, improvement. As, Personally, I saw, I saw an as amazing As a feeling. Improvement. As a feeling, yeah. As a, as a feeling, I, I, I was just blown up uh, because the first trip was, it was a hard one, like a heartbreaking one, to be honest. Uh, they were okay. There was just like the two of them that they were more playful. They didn't want to play with anybody. And there's the play thing is a human thing to think. So I was wrong. And then the other ones, they were like quite in bad shape. Now these three together, they are really, they look wild. They are doing their own games and, and I can see them. Like they are doing a lot of dolphin thing. Uh, they don't follow any rule. They just do whatever they want mm. and whatever they want. And they come to you, they're extremely curious, and then they talk to you, which that's one of the things that excite me more about mammals, really? which is it's like, uh, yeah, uh, voice and vocalization and, and communication. So they just come, talk to you, you don't understand shit, and they go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like fascinating, fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's really also, amazing. I'd imagine yeah. they're getting a lot more confident with their new environment. So when you first went the first time, how long had they actually been in that environment? You know? You're right. That might be that might be a uh, that might be a key point. Huh? Uh, if they were they were not so long there, so probably they were adapting. Now yep. that thing, by they are totally okay. They don't feel any threat uh, around. So maybe that was the, the big thing that I the big change that I saw. Also, the fact that I was in the platform and I'm I was not going anywhere else. So so they knew. Okay, this this person is there. I didn't wear the themes anymore. Uh, just because I thought that the, we thought that the things were like something that not cool to, to bring in the water. And I, I just decided to not dive with them. Anyway, right. when I saw them playing, like, I don't want to be in the middle because they're going to smash me. Like, <laughs> yeah. gonna, we are showing yeah. now picture number 14 and you can really tell that there is a, a huge interaction uh, between the three of them and they look like yeah. playing and having a good time. But what's amazing, I, I find, is the size of a bottlenose, you know, as divers or, or on the sea, quite often they, the dolphin we probably see the most often is spinners. And spinners are not big. They're two, maybe two and a half meters maximum. Whereas a bottlenose, we're talking, these guys can get up to about four meters. We're, these are not four or more meters. These are not small dolphins. Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, I've been with humpback whales and, uh, like you, and, and when that dolphin was not, you know, was not happy about having me there, I got it quickly. Mm. Uh, and he's a big animal and he was not even aggressive at all uh, but you just can feel it okay and and now when they are very nice and they are very playful and they come to you because that's what they do and then they are used to have trainers probably in the past we want to avoid that to keep happening so yeah. uh, or at least if it happens it must be for a reason okay for somebody to do something on them specific not just to come to people right uh, we still don't anyway but when they, they come to you and touch you, you can feel, I mean, it's quite a strong. Uh, you can definitely not be there in the middle. I cannot, I don't feel like this, definitely not my place to be there playing with dolphins. I'm okay in my place, just, you know, just looking at them and holding my breath and standing on the platform and spending hours there. I don't move, I don't, I let them do whatever they want and I'm just lucky enough to be looking at them. 
Cool. From a privileged position, but I don't go and dive with them. This is not about me, guys. I'm just putting the camera there. Yep. It's yeah. about them getting getting into their dynamics, like dolphin dynamics, and doing the dolphin games, which there's a quite a hard. Uh, they are three males, so imagine, guys. There's a lot of tension between them. <laughs> yeah. Tension, but they bite, they crash, they 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 rub, they do a lot of things, and they make a lot of different sounds. Now we have a hydrophone, so we can listen to the whistles, the clicks, everything. It's just really amazing, um, and hopefully soon they're gonna start like catching the live fish, and they will be ready to go back in the wild. Yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, we understand very well uh, uh, the importance of uh, creating media also like for uh, educating, you know, the public about uh, the issues that we have and also to be able to support uh, this great conservation effort uh, like uh, the one uh, organized by FEMK here. And then, uh, you know, bringing together the art and, and uh, you know, like to, to, to use art to pass over that message right that we want to give that message of uh, showing their these animals in a in a beautiful environment and i think that uh, these pictures uh, I, I i love this black and white uh, set uh, here i i have uh, 13 image 13 right now that you can see them hugging each other they need each other like that and you could uh, really capture those moments that uh, it it shows uh, uh, two dolphins uh, sorry three dolphins in in this case like interacting between themselves like they probably would do in, in in the wild and this image right now is educating myself that it shows that the dolphins are playful they are uh, uh, family like uh, um, social animals uh, and you did really like a great uh, job over there to, to portray because this. Because the dolphin is not an animal jumping in a swimming pool with a basketball no. ball, right? It's yes. not like that. Yeah. It's like the, the, the things that we, you guys and me, we know. Mm. Like, and and you know, like, I, I'm trying to think, you know, about all these years. Uh, uh, these images really make me think, you know, like about all those years wasted with the zoo. So ma for many years, like uh, zoos, they've been, uh, you know, in somehow they, they've been good because, you know, you take the children there and they, they start to learn about the animals, but you can, today you can do that uh, like with television and so on. The, a child doesn't really have to, to go there and see. If you want to have your child see a wild animal, bring him to a trip, to an ocean place uh, or to Africa, like to see animals in the wild and, and, and so on. But what I wanted to say, like it, it's been like a sort of wasting time with all this zoo around because uh, you had animals not really displaying their real behavior you know because in that enclosure and you could see that probably here they were so happy all, all of the sudden just to be in that uh, salt water environment that they were taking away from you know like they were in chlorine and things and, and things like that well, guys it's the right time to talk about that right so we experimented for a very 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 small dose is what does it mean to be you know recluded and losing yeah. freedom of, of space and movement 100%. and did this captivity with one of the smartest animals on earth. There's many. Yeah. These are ones of them, okay? They are extremely behavioral and, and, and family-oriented animals. They, they, they are just like us. <laughs> that simple, right? They, they, come need, to, they, they, need, came, they came to talk to you, you said. Right. Oh, because they talk all the time and yeah. they, don't, they don't have like a simple conversation. It's just, we don't understand enough, okay? We are not smart enough to decode the complex language of uh, the mammals and the, the water, uh, water mammals. Uh, they have complex conversations. We, you can see them every single minute you're there. And, and I can see them every single minute. I'm in the water with those animals as well in the wild. They, they talk, they communicate, the whales, they talk. Uh, they talk in a very, very complex way. So it's just a humble, uh, really, really human humble uh, experience to, to just look at them, see them how happy they are right now uh how they should be just dreaming to see them next time in the ocean with uh, with another dolphins and hopefully they will be able to to cope up with uh with another pot and uh pepe so you had uh, like uh, the important duty you know to to capture those images in order to give those messages messages out and definitely 
uh, um, we just watched the images of the dolphins uh, so far, and you definitely, I think, uh, capture those essence out of it. But one thing that I wanted to ask you is like, now you have the project leader and Femke and you had to take a portrait of her. So what were you thinking like when you decided to take a portrait of Femke? I, let's start with image number 10. Right, so, okay. Uh, I did the first trip, uh, so I met Femke on the first trip that I told you guys. And then uh, there's a magazine in Bali called uh, Yak Magazine. So, so they called me like to take a portrait. They were interviewing Femke to make a, an editorial interview printed in the printed version. So they told me like, Pepe, can you just go and make a portrait of her? And Femke, if you have the chance to talk to her, uh, she's just not only the coordinator of the Dolphin Project, but they are part of the Jakarta Animal Aid Network. So they take care of a lot of animals, okay? And especially monkeys, eagles in everywhere, all, all birds, a lot of birds, all territory in Indonesia, okay? Uh, orangutans, so there's a lot of things that they, these guys are doing, quite amazing. So when they told me to take a photo, I spoke with her and I said like, look, yeah, so I like to put the other side, you know, the human into the cage uh, and look straight to the, to the camera uh, to avoid, I didn't want it to, to take like a normal portrait, like we would, you know, take her to the studio and do like a nice photo of her, like, uh, it's not that not her personality, she's, yeah. she's there. To, to tell the truth, to, to protect the ones that they cannot protect and to action, to their activists, okay? They need to be like in the front line of, of, the, of, the, of these, these fights. So we went to the wild, uh, Wildlife uh, Protection uh, Center in here in Bali. So they have like a lot of cages for different animals that they are like passing by. So they are basically, uh, they were kept during trade, illegal trades mm -hmm. uh, all over Asia or, or some like the dolphins or crocodiles, they, were, they had a lot of crocodiles that day because they, they got like, don't know how many, but big crocodiles, like as big as I've seen in my life. Wow. Quite scary. Thing. And they took them from an area, another hotel, I think, or some, at least I don't know, I don't, have the, don't remember the information very well, but they were somewhere and they just removed them from that place for tourists and they, they actually bring them back to, to their real habitats and they release them. And uh, it was a big operation with, you know, with big trucks, uh, lots of people because they're big animals. And so like this, I saw there a lot of birds, a lot of birds and monkeys, mostly in that center. And they are taking care of them until they can, you know, they can coordinate the mission to bring them back to, to their habitat. So yeah, uh, I saw one of the cages and I asked Femke if she was okay to take a photo like that. And she was immediately, she, she said yes. So we, we decided to take, several photos and, and then the yak really liked this one as well as we did like this one. And this one, the, this is the one that got published, the one that she's in the cage, inside of yeah. the cage. Right, sure. And I think it's quite like it by itself, right? So there's no, it's something that we wanted yeah. to portray, not give so many explanations of what this lady does. It's just, this is mm -hmm. her and, and this is the fight. Yeah. Uh, did you use uh, uh, all natural light or did you have uh, also flesh? No, no, no. I got a. I brought there like a like a flashlight with a soft okay. box and a little bit more. Yeah, so very well balanced. Almost I couldn't tell that there was uh, artificial light in there. Thank you so much. Cool, fantastic, uh, fantastic project, and I'm sure you were very um, like uh, proud and happy to be able to to be part of such a good effort and. Uh, Definitely, we're gonna put uh, the link uh, of uh, that association too in the in the description here. So, if any one of our viewers would like to support, and uh, these guys are people making difference differences in uh, in conservation and uh, getting things done, is a good uh, um, association to support. You also had another picture there of the whole team. Why don't you click on that one? Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Amazing people there. They live in the in the sea pen. Some of them they just make turns, but they spend like twenty four hours. So there's always somebody living there to, with the dolphins. And and even now, guys, just another. I think this is quite interesting. Um, even now, with the situation that we have with the COVID nineteen, these people have a special permit from the authorities to go there every day. And so the dolphins, of course, they are well. You know, they they have the same resources, and it's just. Everything is controlled and with the right uh, documentation, so these guys can be there and go back to 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 the town that they are. 
Um, but there's always people coming in and out. Only that area is quite limited, but with a special permit, they, they can keep operating. So it's not abandoned because of the COVID, right. not at all. That's good. And so, so, so yeah. Um, yeah, very amazing people. And I, I get to know them and they, are, they really love the animals. And they don't go in the water. They, they just don't want, which is good. But, but they, are, they really love them and they take amazing care of the dolphins. Good. They need that. Oh yeah, well, well, definitely. These guys definitely they do, huh? And uh, yeah. out of this uh, set of uh, photos uh, that you took uh, of the dolphins, is there like uh, one uh, particular one uh, that uh, touches you more than the others? So you got me in the middle of my part of the project. Okay. Okay. So I'm right now going into the archive. I have a lot of photos. You, you saw the last one from the oh, from the 12 to the end of the. Sorry, from the 12 to the 15. Yeah. Being the 15, the last one that I, that I published, actually. Yeah. Uh, I have a set of different images, and I'm going through all of them and spending really, really a good time. Uh, and this is, my, this is my job now. So we are thinking about doing an auction, like an art auction, to, to get them, to put them out there. So I'm making a special collection, and I want to definitely find the ones that they are a little bit different for something or they are more meaningful for, for yeah. something. I, even like the, the 15, that is a, a, a nice portrait. You can, you can get the expression of the, the feeling, the emotions of the dolphin uh, as a portrait. All the other ones that you like, uh, that they are the three of them, they are like finally playing free. Uh, so, so I want to create like a coordinated, the, story. the, most, the most artistic uh, way that I can. It's not going to be a story, a line, uh, like a like a normal story is going to be a set of images of these dolphins uh from from different points of view so that will be my platform to talk about the rest of the project because i have many photos so when i speak about the the guys taking care of of nk doing some promotion or doing some efforts but these are the ones that they're gonna be you know uh in the front and then, and then I have another set of, of photos to just accompany. So we'll see. Probably we do a little book. We do a little exhibition. We'll see what I get. But I'm right in. in I'm in the archive, like okay. diving into the good, diving into the thousands of photos. And then keep us posted because uh, once uh, this is happening, we are very happy, happy also to to throw it out there on our channels for the people to follow up on this conversation for sure. These ones, guys, actually, I haven't showed them yet. It's only the, the world the premiere 15. right wow. now. Wow. We got number the number one, is, to me, is the, the, is the most visually interesting looking photo to me. Number one. Like? Yeah. yeah. I like that one. one. The number one, yeah. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, I like this photo very much as well. Yeah, you're right. It's just about to come out, but it's yeah. still in the water. So, like yeah. the two yeah. worlds is very meaningful. And, and that but reflection I mean, on the side, I mean, that's a cover. For, for a, a coffee more, table it looks book. looks a little more like a painting. Yeah, beautiful. It looks like a painting. It got this, mm. yeah, you absolutely, this is why I liked it. I don't know why. It's just the water reflections, the expression and everything has this kind of more, I would say, plastical yep. art, attribute. But yeah, the 12, 13, and 14, this is just a premiere. <laughs> nice. There's a lot of particles in the photos. If you zoom in, yeah, I need to work a little bit more on them. We won't do that for you. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Coming up, lovely, beautiful portrait. Thanks, Pepe. Thanks Thank so you. much to to bringing it here and almost as a premiere. And the world premiere yeah, yes. world premiere uh, on the Underwater Tribe channel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so it was Thank great you, to guys. have you. It was great to have you again here with us. And uh, definitely, we are here neighbors, so we should do this uh, kind of. Uh, on an ongoing uh, routine, you know, like it's uh, so good. <laughs> Same time zone Maybe makes not. life easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you so much. And thank, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm very happy. I cannot say like thank from the team, from the Dolphin Project team, all these guys there. And we all thank you very, very much because this is important for us. It's important that we get like the, the light on, on this project. It's important that people get us to know. It's important that people stop going to the zoos, stop going to these shows. Yeah. And, and we all educate and, 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 and you know, and bring beauty of yeah. all these not just sad stories, but you know, we create some beauty stories as well. Yep. Correct. And Good every teams. everybody can make a difference, uh, like you said, just don't go to those shows. If those shows would not have uh, any people going, like right now during the COVID-19, they are all probably suffering and, and not being able to sustain themselves. So 
That's the way that we can put them out of business. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Pepe. Thanks so much. Uh, and we look for the welcoming you back here again on future live show again. Anytime, guys. Anytime. All right. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank Thanks, you. Pepe. Bye bye. Bye bye. And uh, here we are back in our studio live. Uh, with yes. You. That was Pepe Arcos. Uh, thanks so much uh, for bringing your beautiful uh, pictures to, that uh, describe a very important topic. A very sobering topic, to be honest. It's amazing what we will do to each to 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 animals out there. Yeah, and I see it coming here in the comment, uh, like uh, Carlin is saying, like we stressed also at the end of the interview. So the most important thing is. Uh, don't go in those places and yep. actually also be vocal like if you see something let's say a hotel that has this it's actually good to to maybe like send them a message an email like that and say that uh, i've seen that you ha having captive dolphins and this is not the way that it should be we definitely will never come to your place and that those kind of messages when they keep coming they do they make a they do make a difference yeah they certainly yeah. will but as long as people keep going, then it doesn't help. So. Right. We had some important, in, uh, in interesting information coming out on the YouTube channel, actually. Somebody was yes. uh, mentioning something in the comments that these dolphins in particular were coming from North Java Sea. So they were captured in the North Java Sea and being kept captive in Central Java before they were sold to uh, the Bali hotel, the hotel in Bali, yeah. here. So imagine it's not even like straight to a hotel, it's even like in some provisional... Holding pen or uh, something, yeah. Yeah, maybe like, uh, who knows, like a sketch. Very, very, very sad, very, very sad story. And uh, for us, it's always important to, to bring this to the attention of the public uh, so that we can maybe make a small change out there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I think even though sometimes we have these tough topics, like what we had Aaron Joukowsky a couple of weeks ago, Pepe today, um, some of these topics are a little bit difficult sometimes to listen to and, and to think about, but they are important to know about uh, so that we can, as uh, Karen said earlier, vote with your wallet. Don't, don't give these places the time of day and hopefully eventually they will go by the wayside. Yeah, and it's such a great thing, you know, to know that there are people out there making such a great effort. Yes. You know, like it's, it's not easy because you, you start with the passion of the love for the animals, but then you start to see, you, you start to help them like this, but you, you find yourself like in many sad situations, you know, right. seeing them, how they've been treated and, and so on. And if you want to, su to do also... Uh, if you would like to contribute and in supporting the frontliners out there, we put a link in the description, guys, and you can uh, uh, donate something and that will help continuing with their continue great the job. Yeah, continue the fight. Right, Mike. So what, what have we got coming up on Friday? Friday. On Friday, we are back to our morning show. So we will have mugs full of coffee, I hope. Yes. Friday morning, I will be. Coffee bars. I, I always, I always need that that extra oomph in the morning on Fridays. I, I, I seem to be more awake in the afternoons. You are the opposite way. You're a you're a morning person. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> so Friday we are 8 a.m. with Bert Jones and Maureen Shimlock. If you guys have not uh, have not watched the previous podcast that we did with them. Oh, I'm going to say maybe about two years ago now. Yeah. We did one. They were here with us in studio. We had a great conversation about their history, uh, how they got into the diving business, all that kind of stuff. This week, we will discuss a little, little bit about their their history, but not too, too much. And then we'll go straight into a, a lot of the work that they're doing with the, uh, the Bird's Head Peninsula, the Bird's Head Seascape. And um, it's a website sponsored with Conservation International and a lot of the work that they're doing with them, as well as chat about what's going on over in Rajampad and Triton Bay, Chenderwasi Bay during this time. So a really good, insightful interview with the two of them. Legends in the business. Legends nice in the business. Very nice people. That's right. Yes, gotcha. and that brings us uh, actually to the end uh, of uh, this uh, live show Wednesday, and uh, will be just a couple of days. A couple of days more. More? No, less than. Probably less than, less than 48 well, hours have, and we're going to be uh, back here, some guys. Some people have hold In fact, oh. I shouldn't even be here today because it's a, 
<laughs> it's a national Canadian holiday. I shouldn't even be. I should be. I should be camping somewhere. And you should be camping. How do you celebrate? It is Canada Day. Canada Day. How do you celebrate that? We usually go camping somewhere out in you the go bush camping. because we got a lot of beer out in the bush to go to. So we go somewhere near a lake and hang out. Hang out. Drink Build lots of fires. beers. Well, not usually big fires in July because you'll burn down the place. But a lot of the time we we go camping or we do family events, all that kind of stuff. So happy Canada Day, happy everyone! Canada Day. Let's Let leave this on a out high what note. Year it would be because it's 1867. So do the math. I didn't know you were that old. 153 years old is Canada. Wow. There you go. You're younger than the States. The British North American Act of 1867. I thought nobody was younger than the States. Well, there's, how about East Timor? Oh, that's very young. Yeah. All right. Let, let's finish like this. You see, we can finish like that. <laughs> For all you Canadians out there, happy Canada Day. Luke is now going to sing O Canada while we go out and... Oh, yeah? Yeah, go uh, for it. Tell me something. Uh-oh. I have no idea what the national anthem is because okay. I normally don't see you winning on any sports besides oh, hockey. Oh, this is, this is the reason why you change sports. Some <laughs> days you're Swiss, sometimes you're Italian. Right. Depending on the sport. How do you say, like, Happy Canada Day in a Canadian? Happy Canada Day. A. Hey. Hey. A. Not hey. A. A. E-H. A. Yeah, there you go. A. Happy Canada Day. A. Everybody, A. Yeah, no. Happy no. Canada Day, A. All right. All right, guys. Can I finish yes. the show? <laughs> yes, you can. Saturday will be July 4th. For the right, guys. Show. Don't forget to follow us on uh, Facebook, uh, on uh, YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Share this uh, um, this uh, show with your friends uh, and if you would like to leave a small donation to the underwater tribe here in Bali all our team many of them are actually also in the chat right now like yes Parman even Parman yeah. showed up if you would like to donate uh, a small contribution to us uh, we put few links uh, there and uh, is the coffee things in the in the links down there Thanks a lot to everyone for being here with us also today and we look forward to seeing you Friday. Friday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.